prestige pawnbrokers. That is absolutely stunning. Serves Britain's elite. I've got a portrait of Princess Diana. Here, gentry and jet setters exchange their luxuries. For eye-watering amounts. That's worth two to three million pounds. Good grief. The man behind it all... Bob, I'm just flying a 747. I'll have to call you back. ..is entrepreneur James Constantino. We deal in almost anything of value, but what I love the most is the ones that make me the most profit. Could be as much as a million pounds. Ooh! Excellent! <laughs> this time, a sword with a dubious past... It wasn't for thrusting, it was more perhaps for... The heading. Yes. An exclusive man bag. Oh, wow. So nice. It is very you, isn't it? And James... Love it! ..is in the wars. Whoa, whoa! Welcome to the world of posh porn. There is a way to make an entrance. <laughs> my destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Hello. How can I help? Is it possible to see James? <laughs> High-end pawnbroker James... I think we could probably get around 100 grand. ..now has Deborah to help run his four branches across the country. James really does need someone looking after him. He's like a 12-year-old kid. He's thinking about things, so many things, but he needs to really concentrate on the business. Oh, my goodness me. I, I think James takes to her quite well. She whips him into place. Scary me a little bit. Boss is my middle name. <laughs> Today, James has been left to his own devices at the Weybridge branch and he's had an inquiry for the ultimate boy's toy. We've just had an email inquiry from a guy called Doug who's based up in Scotland and he's got a couple of tanks, um, a polecat and a fox. Um, apparently they're 1970s, British built. Uh, he's looking to sell them on. He's invited me up there to have a little look at them. That would be my childhood dream, to be driving around in a tank. <laughs> in the heart of the Scottish countryside... <laughs> ..lives retired army officer Doug with his collection of military vehicles and his wife, Sylvana. God knows how many vehicles he has. You know, sometimes I walk out, I don't know where I am. You know, I think I'm in, in the middle of a war zone. One day I'll sit down and actually calculate how many I have owned. I think it's round about the 50 mark. They're great fun to drive, even the, the smell of old engines running. Modern cars don't smell anything like it. Just when you thought there weren't any more vehicles here, we have this shed. Oh, it just goes on and on. <laughs> Doug's obsession began in earnest as a teenager. When I went to university, I was very much a, a child of the 70s with uh, long hair and flowery jeans, but I joined the officer training corps, which was great fun. And I got to like the, the military life, strangely enough. Sylvana will very rarely venture out to the garages because um, I think this is, this is my patch. If she wants me for anything, she'll ring a bell and hope that I might hear it and come. Doug! Coming! Doug and I have been married for 24 years. I was working as a personnel officer and Doug was posted in as my boss. But now he says I'm his boss. And I agree. You know, he has to do what he's told. Or there will just be serious consequences. <laughs> Doug has now decided to take Sylvana and his daughters on a trip of a lifetime. So he's selling two 1970s machines, the Polecat and the Fox. I always wanted one of these. What I like about them is the sheer complexity of them. 
This thing probably cost in the region of three quarters of a million pounds at 1970s prices. And of course, having finally got one, I really don't want to say goodbye to it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the, the sad reality is that um, I'm getting a bit old and arthritic for this. I'd really like to take the family on a nice holiday to New Zealand before the, the children flee the nest for good. Well, what are you up to? Oh, come and see this here. This is the ten things that you must do where, if you're going to New Zealand. Yep. We'll just take an idea for four weeks. Yeah. At least three weeks. No, it would be four weeks, right. at least. Four weeks, Doug. Okay. okay. Somebody will love those vehicles, will love them and give them all the love that Doug has given them for God knows how many years. I'll be heartbroken to see them go. I'll be so sad. If I could get around about the 30 grand for both vehicles, I'd be a happy man. That would enable me to achieve what I'm trying to achieve. Headquarters, Boss James is surveying the office. I think I'm feeling you up to something, James. Just having a little look round. Who organised the fire extinguishers? Me. They look like they cost a fortune. How much do they cost? Oh, God. Is it really necessary? Well, how much is your staff's like? Not a lot. Mm. I can give you the address if you like. The pawn shop's next client has left assistant manager Michael an eclectic collection of items to appraise. Michael, how are you doing? Hi, good. What you got? What you got? Uh, we've got a few things just come in. Oh, lovely. That's nice. Um, we've got a nice Art Deco brooch there. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a Rolex, diamond ring, diamond and ruby studs, tennis bracelet, and then three quite old coins. OK. Um, and she's looking between uh, four and six thousand. All right, keep me posted. Keep me in the loop. Mm -hmm. Would it? Lovely. Cheers, mate. Okay, so here's the test. My very first BlackBerry in Kent. Nice. The items were brought in by Dutch singer-songwriter Yoka. This is the life, isn't it? That's what you want. <laughs> you can eat from your own garden. When she's not foraging for fruit, <laughs> Yoka has a deep-rooted passion. I guess for me, music is a way of expressing myself. All my life, I've been told to calm down, don't take up so much space, <laughs> uh, don't don't be so loud. And on stage, you can I can be exactly who I am. I paid a taxi and walk up to the door. I went to theatre school and that's kind of where I discovered that I can sing. Memories to be cherished. <laughs> this is uh, our wedding. Yoka tied the knot to guitarist Ray three years ago. That's us singing. We did one song together, but we actually wrote each other a song instead of Faust. It was fitting for us. I think it's perfect that we both play and that we play in the same band. That's who we are. And it's not, you know, we're not going to stand on stage hand in hand, <laughs> because that would be a bit sickly. Tonight, I'm here with my band, Yoke and the Sugar Beats, and we're here to do a gig. It's the first time we've never played in this venue before. We're doing well, actually. This weekend, we have three gigs. People have been asking for recordings. People want to buy stuff at, at gigs, and DJs want to pay us, which is, of course, great. But we want to give them a really good product because we're very proud of what we're doing. To record their debut album, they need between four and six thousand pounds. So Yoka and Ray have pulled together anything they can find of value to reach the target. We have some items, uh, mostly from Ray's family, money that we don't want to get rid of, but it is a way of getting money on a short-term basis. The plan is to loan the items and then record the album 
sell it as quick as we can so that we then, after that, can get the items back. But will James be able to loan the money for this selection of treasures so Yoka and the Sugar Beets can take their first step to stardom? wasn't actually on sale to the public, this one. 90% of designer bags are brought into the shop by women. But today, handbag expert Claudia has had an inquiry from one of the 10%. So I've had an email from a man called Benjamin. He has a Hermes, which is a 30 centimetre Birkin, and he wants to change it for our 50 centimetre, which he's seen on our online store. Wow. I've not seen one of these images as a uh, profile picture on an email before. Hello? Hiya. Have you got a minute? Yeah, sure. I've got something to show you. You might want to bring the other girls as well. OK. That'll be interesting. I can't wait to see their reaction, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Come and have a look. Oh, wow. <laughs> Deborah's face. <Hello. laughs> I knew you girls would like it. It looks like a poster. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I thought you'd appreciate it, girls. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> the body has to match the face. For professional masseuse 28-year-old Benjamin, looking good is top priority. Because who likes looking at a hot, handsome guy without the rest? So I know I wouldn't. Uh, it's really important to, you know, keep physical. My job is hands-on, you know, I'm massaging people all day. So if I don't have physical strength myself, then I'm really not able to do a good job. And not only that, I mean, it's summertime and I like to keep less on as possible. I was 18 stone at my heaviest, and um, I had to buy for myself size 42 round the waist trousers. You know, as a child, or 16 year old in secondary school, that's not cute. Right, so this is the most entertaining part of my day opening my beautiful makeup bag and just sorting out my look. I mean, I don't really have a lot of surgical enhancements apart from a bit of Botox. And I've had my lips filled because as a black guy, I really didn't really have big lips. Voila! I've had this 30 centimetre Hermes Birkin for about six months now. It was a gift from my aunt. She gave it to me as a birthday present. I could do without it. I can't do without the Hermes or the Birkin, but I can do without the 30 centimetre. <laughs> it's a camp bag, and um, I could do without the campness, you know. I don't want to be walking down Mayfair and just bringing more attention to myself. I haven't personally used it that much because it's just too feminine for me. I think this bag is worth in the region of between seven to eight thousand pounds. For Benjamin, in this case, bigger is better, as he wants to swap his 30 centimetre bag for Claudia's 50 centimetre version. When I first set my eyes on this bag, it was like my ultimate first love. Now that excludes men. <laughs> I've got a couple of rings you might be interested in. Assistant manager Michael is appraising singer Yoka's items. She's hoping for a loan of at least £4,000. Yoka's got a nice little collection of pieces here. This is a really nice brooch, Art Deco style brooch. And we've got a lot of diamonds there. We've got a fairly large diamond in this ring. Tennis bracelet is nice. What's interesting is the coins. You know, you've got a five shilling coin here. You know, if this was in mint condition, we're talking 
well into the thousands. Uh, you've got a really nice gold guinea coin, 1777, but it looks like something's got on it, something that's corrosive. That's going to bring the price down quite considerably. Um, most of the money in all these pieces is going to be in the tennis bracelet, the brooch, the diamond ring, and to an extent the watch. Rolex sell well, but it doesn't have box or papers, and it's quite a small size and doesn't have any spare links. So it's a Rolex, but again, it doesn't always mean it's going to be worth a lot of money. But will Yoka's collection be able to reach a minimum loan of £4,000? In Weybridge, James has had an inquiry for a rather unusual item. Firstly, run it by me. What have you actually got? 1820, yeah. Lovely. OK, well, I'll send you an email now. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Bye. Well, that uh, sounds like a lovely lady. Amaryllis, uh, she's been given a, a wedding present of roughly 30 years ago, and it was actually given to her by a um, sultan. She has been told that the sword is from the 1820s. It sounds like an incredible story. I mean, this really, really is the sort of thing that could be worth a hell of a lot of money to the right person. Go on, get it. <laughs> Mum of three, Amaryllis, lives with her family in Potter's Bar. <sighs> That was Arabic. I was born in Sudan. Uh, I'm one of the oldest Greek families in Sudan, uh, from great-great-grandfather. We're all trilingual. We speak fluent Arabic, English and Greek, and it's intertwined in our everyday life. When I tell my children off, or I don't want anyone to understand, I'll speak uh, Arabic to them, and, uh, but usually we speak mostly... Greek and English, Mum. Yeah, Greeklish. We lived in Khartoum, the capital. My dad had like a little mini zoo uh, just behind our house. We had baby lion cubs. We had a baby elephant which was away from the house, otherwise it would trample all over our garden. My father had crocodiles and he used to keep them in the bathtub. Do you remember these? Chico. Oh, God, do you remember when I gave him chewing gum and he pulled me through the cage? And Nelly. I remember. We had an amazing time. Very lucky, very blessed. This one is your typical Sudanese filigree silver. You get plates, you get little jewellery boxes. In 2004, Amaryllis settled permanently in the UK, bringing with her a treasure trove of Sudanese antiquities. I just like to display them. It's who I am and I love it all. This is the sword, um, belonged to the Sultan Ali Dinar of uh, Sudan. It was um, given to me in 1984 when I got married. Sultan Ali Dinar was the last ruler of uh, Darfur and he died in 1916. My husband knew the family and they actually handed me the sword. It's got his signature here, and on the sword itself, it tells you that this is the Sultan of Ali Dinar and the date. I mean, when you hold it in your hand, it's, it's quite powerful. It really is. I'm sure it's worth a lot of money. I mean, this is history, Anglo-Egyptian, Sudan history. I don't want to sell it because of the money or anything, it's just that my time with it is, is done and dusted. It's got to go somewhere else now. I really don't know how much it's worth, but if I got a large sum, I would probably finish extending my house. And at the moment, we've just finished part of it. After all, we do between myself and my husband, we have got five children. They need room. <laughs> yes. It is a sentimental piece for me. It is very much my heritage and history of Sudan. It would be very sad to see it go, but um, I've enjoyed it for many years and think somebody professional can look after it better than I can.
James has travelled to Scotland to test drive ex-army officer Doug's tanks, which he wants to sell to pay for a family trip to New Zealand. He's looking to sell two pieces, so a polecat and a fox, and he's looking for 30 grand for the pair. If I don't impress James today, then I'm afraid that really scuppers our plans for uh, this holiday, and time is running out. Doug. Hello, James. How are you? Very well, thanks. Good, good. How do you do? Hello, Welcome lovely. to a rather damp Aberdeenshire. We've got tanks, so we'll be all right, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can put up with anything yeah. the weather can throw at us. Well. Oh, I think so. Do you want to have a quick tour around? Yeah, I'll let's get have the missus to make us a cup of tea. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Right, this is the first one. And this is called the pole cut. Practically brand new. It's only ever done 120 miles. There were only around 300 made. But I would imagine you're quite vulnerable in here with these tyres. No, not really. These are bulletproof tyres. OK, so where's the other one, Doug? It's just over here, so we'll, we'll okay. go and have a look at that now. And there she is. That's more like it. That's yeah. what I was had in my head, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Now, let's get it out. When I first saw the tanks and that cannon um, on the turret, I thought, I want some of this. I need to go have a look at it. It's all about. Doug, have you ever thought of becoming a mini dictator? Yes, well, I'm available for hire if anyone wants an army. Fantastic. One thing that strikes me straight away is the condition again. It's very complete, very original, and of course, it's got the gun. The gun's important to me. Very important to everybody, actually. Yeah. This one is not the same as the polecat. This is the fox. What yeah. was the main difference between the two? Well, the only real difference between them is uh, the turret. The polecat just had this little machine gun turret fitted, mm. uh, whereas this one obviously has a big armament. And, of course, if you got into trouble, you had a good chance of shooting your way out of it. So have you got anywhere we can just sort of...? Well, we can take it for a little drive up and down the track, if you like. Doug, who are we going to go and invade? When I climbed up into the turret, I felt like one of uh, Kelly's heroes, not Dad's army. Come on, river up. That's it, stickering. Yes, we're off. Let's go and go and invade a few places and we'll be back for lunch. There is something about being in a tank um, and being in control of a cannon, especially. You do feel a little bit powerful, and I was getting a little bit carried away, to be honest. Love it! You all right down there? Oh, yes. Right, let's go home, Doug. Was that meant to happen, Doug? I felt really sorry for Doug as he was reversing and he crunched the rear corner. I mean, my heart went out for him. Oh, would you believe it? It all adds so, to the uh, sort of battle-worn sort of uh, patina, to be quite honest with you. Well, if you say so. <laughs> well, I don't want that'll be a, by the time I finish with it, that'll be a plus. Oh, well. Actually, I've got, I've got some spares. Well, I'll just replace it. I've got another wing, so... Uh, You've got a wing for that. Know. So, uh, I'll just mm. stick that on. OK. So tell me again, just to run through the figures, so the pole cap, what we're looking at there? We're looking around about 13, I reckon, for that. 13. Now, we were looking when this was, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Still am, <laughs> Jim. I will fix that. All right. Um, so you're looking for 17 for this, yeah, not for sort of 16 and three quarters. No, I'll fix that. <laughs> OK. It's been a brilliant experience. We have got individuals and private collectors that do deal in uh, this sort of stuff. Brilliant. Oh, well. Lovely. Thanks for today, mate. Thank you, James. Cheers. Lovely. Bye for now. Bye. I'd be very, very disappointed if we can't sell these now. It's a case of fingers crossed, I think. Being at the top of the turret was great fun. Just to have a little experience out in the tank was phenomenal for me. So, really, I've got to see if there's anyone willing to put their hands in their pocket for £30,000.
pawn shop's headquarters in Hatton Garden, boss James is back from a business meeting. Hi, right, Deborah. Joy. Oh, hello. Oh, my God. You are kidding me, aren't you? It's a bit wet. How did this happen? I don't know. You are kidding. What are we going to do? We better stop. I've got some blue roll. Some blue oh. roll or loo roll? No, blue roll. <laughs> oh. Like you get in the petrol station, you know, blue roll. Right. OK. This is all I need right now. Oh, I'm getting a sweat on. <laughs> However it is. <laughs> Flamenco is us. In East London, Claudia is going to meet professional masseuse Benjamin. He's got a 30 centimetre Birkin that he doesn't really like because it's a bit too small. So he saw the 50 centimetre that we've got online. And um, Benjamin's one I haven't seen yet, so obviously that's why I'm here to come and see him and have a look at his bag and see what we can do. Well, today, it's like the day I've been waiting for. You know, when you're just like a little child and you're just waiting for Christmas? Well, it's come early for me. Hey, Hello. how are you? Oh, how are you? Pleasure. Yes, you I'm really well. Amazing. Thank you. So do you. Oh, my God, you look so even you. better in, in the flesh than oh, you do in the thank images. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm truly humbled. I know, they're so really what, jealous. Claudia, I must say something. I didn't expect to see an orange bag glistening from the corner of my eye. Oh, did you not? No. Well, I thought I'd come and show you it, but I want to see yours first. <laughs> right, do you want to get it out for me? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thanks. I feel like a bit of an amateur getting it out with <laughs> Now you've got your white gloves on. <laughs> Right. This is it. It's lovely though, isn't it? I mean, these are so desirable, they are. the 30 centimetres. They are. We've got the lock and keys. God, the corners are all good. Okay, so this looks in pretty good condition overall. You haven't really used it much, have I you? Um, Apart from a drunken night with zip tugging. Action. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah, I can see here. So, uh, you, have you got the little bit? I do have it. Oh, have you? Okay, that's good. All right, well, apart from that, I mean, it all seems to be okay. Um, obviously, it will affect the value of the bag once okay. I come to price it. No problem. Um, it is quite small, it isn't is, it? Yeah. I suppose the 50 centimetres would be is, ideal. Is, yeah. Because, you know, I travel a lot for work with my massage and right. I could just literally just be throwing all my oils and a couple yeah. of bits and bobs in there. So, do you have any idea what the value of this is at the moment? So, 9,000 retail is what I've been told. Right. So, I'm hoping that I can achieve anything close to it. I mean, I'd, ideally, I'd like a straight swap. I suppose you want to see our one, don't you? <laughs> How much do you want to see it? This much? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to look down there yet. Well, there you go. It's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Am I loud? Of course you are. Yeah, go for it. Oh, I know exactly what to do. It's almost like I dreamt this. <laughs> oh, wow. You're so excited. <laughs> I am. Just waiting for some tears now. We'll keep it all oh, stuck. Oh, look at so... that. This is amazing. Like, I mean, look. Yeah. You know? and, but can you just uh, let me just have a little um, yeah, catwalk with it? Of course it? you can. Go on, let me have a look at you doing the yeah, catwalk. I know. <laughs> oh, pretend you're going through customs. Well, we'll start from here. That looks good. That actually looks really good. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. It's amazing. Do you like it? So nice. It is very you, isn't it? It's it incredible. Very good. OK, well, look, I'll take them both back with me. Yeah. And we'll do some sums and see if we can strike a deal for you. Please. Cool. OK. Thank you so much, Claudia. You're welcome. I would have loved to have walked away today, um, you know, sort of been certain that we could do the straight swap with the Benjamin's bag against our one, but because of the zip being damaged, um, that kind of puts a real big obstacle in the way of the value of the bag. James is headed to Potter's Bar to meet antiques expert Adam. Together, they're assessing Amaryllis's Sudanese sword. I really need a second opinion on this, and I really need a good understanding of the history, where it came from, uh, who it was purchased by, what's the sort of general history of the item. It could be a really, really important thing for us to be dealing with. I've actually been up all night 
but I've been very nervous about handing it over. Call me silly, call me, oh, she's being pathetic, but I'm not. It's been with me for more than 30 years. How are you doing, Adam? Nice Good to see, to see you. you. That's a nice shirt. You like that, do you? Yeah. Should have kept my shades on. Very bright. <laughs> Hi, uh, Hello, how are you I'm Amaryllis. Hello. 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 This is Adam. Adam. Hello, Adam. Hi, nice Come in. in. This is it. Well, well, well. Fascinating. What, what's the story behind it? This is the sword belonging to the last Sultan of Darfur, Sultan Ali Dinar. Mm -hmm. He was killed in battle in 1916, and his family gave it to me as a wedding present in 1984. Wow. Yes. Some wedding present, isn't it? It was. Where has it lived for the last 30 years? In bubble wrap in a cupboard. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, because it's actually falling apart, and yeah. since I've been in the UK, I can see that it's deteriorating rather fast. The leather scabbard starting yes. to flake and everything. Let's have a look, then. You'll so you'll will you, will you support the, the scabbard for me? Ooh. It's quite hot, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. Voila. Have you had any of the... This sort of translated at all? I do know if you turn it round. Um, it is the Sultan of Ali Dinar, then the name of his father, then... Uh, the previous, previous generations. And then it, in Arabic, these, this is 1216. Yeah, which I think translates to about 1800, 1801, yes. something like that. Oh. Either side of the inscription, I know just running my hand along, I'm quite glad I've got gloves on, because that's really... Very sharp. Very sharp, mm. but, but specifically here, which to me indicates it wasn't for thrusting, it was more perhaps for... Beheading. Yes. Hmm, beheading. Hmm. Hmm. On that note, um, I shall put it down. It's one of those things that, that gives you almost a physical reaction. I'm quite excited about it. Well, what a fantastic thing. It's obviously absolutely genuine. Well, I know it's genuine. It was yeah. handed to me by the family, uh, great-great-grandchildren. I think it would probably be wise to go away, do a bit of research. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Great Thank to you see you. Much. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. That went pretty good. Looking forward to getting um, the results. <laughs> These sort of items can be typically worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, but at this stage, I really can't tell until we've got it back to Hatton Garden, but I'm hoping for a good number for her. central London, singer Yoka has come to see if James will loan against her items. She's hoping to raise enough money so her band can produce their first record. If we don't get the offer, then, well, then we have to make a different plan. Then the album won't come as quickly as we were hoping for. The quality of some of the pieces here is pretty exceptional. Uh, there are a few issues with the coins um, and the Rolex, but let's see where we can get to. How are you doing? Hello. How are you, Hi. Okay, you all right? All right. Grab a seat, sit Thank yourself you. down. How you been? Good. Good, good. Well, thanks for coming in. I mean, there are some items that uh, are quite spectacular. What do you know about the pieces? To be honest, I don't know very much about it. Most of it comes from my husband's family. And what are you looking to do with the money and how much are you looking to, to, to get? Um, well, we're hoping to get between four and six grand, but that might be too optimistic, I don't know. Um, and it is to record our first album. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, look, there are some issues with some of them. The coins uh, we'll start with. I mean, in top order, those coins could be worth £5,000 by themselves. Unfortunately, your coins are not of particularly good condition. I think these really would be more sort of hundreds as opposed to thousands each coin. Right. Um, these Rolexes tend to sell quite well. Um, but we like to see them with the box and papers usually. We can buy them or dealing them um, without the box and papers, but it does reflect in the value. On the positive side, we've got a tennis bracelet there, um, seven carats of diamonds set in white gold. Very desirable piece. The brooch, um, Art Deco uh, set in platinum, I believe. Uh, there's probably about six carats of diamond there, so a heavy diamond content. Really, really nice, uh, really good quality. Unfortunately, the, the coins that you've got let the price down. But the number we are able to offer is £10,000. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> it's 
it's too much. <laughs> too much? <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah, you're four to six, not an issue. If you need ten, it's there. Great. You all right with that? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So what sort of music do you perform then? Um, soul, blues. Can you give us a little rendition? <laughs> Just a teeny weeny one. Oh, come on. Uh, OK. <laughs> I'm ready to start again someplace new. And this day has been long overdue. I'm finally able to move again. I'm taking the lead without you. That's it. Nice. That's all you're getting. <laughs> That's 11 grand. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that was fantastic. That was brilliant. I'm so impressed. Thanks for coming in. Thank get you. Get it all much. done and get it all over to you. Yes. Lovely. Cheers. Thank Good you. to see you. Thank you. Really nice lot of jewellery there, so no issues. £10,000. She seems happy. I'm happy. And to be honest with you, I really enjoyed it. It was much better than I thought. Um, can't believe you make me sing though. But yeah, it was good. So now we need to get our skates on and get the songs finished and start that album. Is there anything on there? We always take them out. Would that be um, um, something we can work on? In the front office, assistant manager Michael has taken delivery of Amaryllis's Sudanese sword. Now, the sword itself is not an uncommon style of swords. This sword is called a Sudanese Kaskara. So we found very, very similar ones that have sold in the past, which is great and gives us something to go by. If you have a sword that's owned by the Sultan, then you're talking big money. So obviously the big question is, you know, what's the provenance of this sword? All the clues we need are on the piece itself. We've been able to talk to um, a few experts that have been able to translate some of it. Suddenly all the history just falls out in front of us. So the sword was made about 1900, but there was probably a handful of swords like this that had the same inscription um, and were used for the same purpose. Um, and that purpose was not to chop off heads. That side of the story is not right. In terms of Vali, I have no idea what she's going to be expecting, and I have no idea if what we offer her will be enough. Pawn shop's headquarters. Just received your email in regard to your Gucci bag. James has something important to ask the team. I've got a really good joke. What joke is it, James? On which side do chickens have most feathers? The outside. How do you know? I don't know, because I've got a logical brain. Oh, good. <laughs> Amaryllis has arrived to see James and Michael to find out if her treasured Sudanese sword has more than just sentimental value. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Good to see you. You too. You all right? Grab a seat. Yeah, my baby. Your baby's there. My baby's there. <laughs> <laughs> just want to say fantastic item to be presented with, so um, thank you for that. Uh, Michael, uh, you've been working away. What, what, what have you found? Uh, we found out quite a bit about it, actually. Right. Um, the big numbers are going to be if it was the Sultan's own personal sword. OK. If this was actually the Sultan's own sword, yes. the handle should be completely silver or gold. Mm -hmm. This is silver and brass. OK. There should be further inscriptions on the blade as well. So, unfortunately, yeah. We now know that it's not the Sultan's own sword. All right. So it will either be the bodyguards or one given as, as a gift. OK. Now, we're, from our research, looking at the condition of this and mm. from talking to other experts, yeah. this particular sword could make anything from 1,500 to 5,000 pounds. How do you feel about that? Now that I know how much it is, and I don't know whether I would like to sell it. It's been with me for 32 years, and I was very upset that it actually left the house. Um, I think I'm going to keep it. You know, I think you're right in holding on to it and mm. uh, enjoy it, pass it down through the family line. I think I will. 
I think it's going to go to my kids. Well, look, Michael will wrap it up for you, and thanks for coming in. It's been an amazing... Thank you very uh, much. Amazing bit of work for us. It has and, been. Uh, we've really enjoyed it. So it's Brilliant. been great to see you. Good. Lovely, Lovely to see you too. Thank you very much. See you. I think I'm going to hand it down to my children. It's part of our history. Deep down, I didn't really want to sell the sword, but uh, no, glad to know a little bit more about it. Let's face it, Amaryllis probably didn't want to let the sword go. And maybe the news that it's not quite as valuable as she may have thought is a good excuse to hang on to it. Scotland, retired military officer Doug is eagerly awaiting an offer from James for his armoured cars. He's hoping for £30,000 so he can take his family on a trip of a lifetime. This is a big day. I'm expecting a call from James to say how he's got on. Obviously, if, if he has found a customer, then I would be absolutely over the moon. We've been on the phone to everyone um, there is out there in that, in that field. And I'm at the stage now where I've got to give him a call and I've got to give him an answer. Hi there, it's James from Prestige. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, it's a lovely day. It's pouring down with rain. <laughs> it was early, right? Oh, well. Right, Doug, down to, the, uh, down to the business with a tank. Yeah. One thing we found sort of fairly early on in the talks uh, with people is that these particular tanks, because they're not associated with any great conflicts, uh, they haven't got much history behind them in terms of uh, usage. Yeah. They were very, very difficult for us to drum up some interest in. That period, the 70s, 80s, uh, hasn't really caught on amongst the collectors a great deal. Believe me, I've tried everyone and their I'm dog sure, to sure. bring them to the table. Um, look, I'm going to be straight with you. At this particular moment in time, I haven't actually got someone for them, to be honest yeah, with you, Doug. I, I, uh, I thought that might be the result, you know, g given the state of the market. I think you hit the nail on the head there. At the moment, it's a buyer's market. Yeah. Um, oh. So I really apologise, Doug, at the moment. Not at all, not at all. Well, thank you very much for spending all the time, and, and at least for trying on my behalf, James. I'm very, very grateful. That's OK, great. mate. Yeah, Lovely well, to speak to you. Great. Thanks a lot again, James. It's Cheers, very good mate. of you. Cheers for now, Bye. Jim. Bye. Bye. Oh, God, I hate doing that. I really can't bear giving people not... Well, it's not even bad news, but it's not positive news, is it? I am very disappointed. Um, I know Silvana will be, and the kids too, because, you know, we were looking forward to having a, a good break away. Uh, well... The answer's a lemon. Hasn't happened, my love. Oh, not to worry. You tried. <laughs> no. You tried. I know. Well, I just have to keep trying. Other ways. Yep. I'll just have to sell you and yeah. sell the dogs and sell, sell the dogs, everything. Sell everything. And get the whiskey out. Drown right. my sorrows. All right, Mona. Thank you. Bye. Claudia has news for Masseuse Benjamin regarding his 30 centimetre bag that he wants to swap for the larger 50 centimetre version. Benjamin's bag is in very good condition, apart from the zip that's broken. Benjamin has come to headquarters to find out if it's good news. I'm a little bit apprehensive today because it's um, the day that decides everything, really. <laughs> Talking about it like I'm about to die or something, but it feels like that. Come in, Benjamin. Come and take you. a seat. Thank you. Oh. It's a bit warm in here, isn't it's it? It's a lovely office, Claudia. <laughs> Do you like it? Surrounded with loads of brands. I know. <laughs> lots of beauty around me. <laughs> loads of beauty. <laughs> I know. So tell me, have you missed your bag? I have. I have. have. You? I'm just hoping, Claudia, that you're going to give me the news I want to hear today. So you're looking for good news, then? I'm not looking for it. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Put me out of my misery, please. <laughs> right, well, basically, um, with the 30 centimetre, I have actually um, got interest on it. I do actually have someone for it, as it bag. is. Yeah, as it is. Without... <laughs> <laughs> without um, getting it repaired or anything okay. like that. Price-wise, there is a difference. Um, we can swap your bag 
for our one, we can do that. You can. But there is an addition. Right. Okay. 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 Um, basically, we would be giving you £2,000 as well as our bag. Wow. Do you know what? Can I just go outside and like, <laughs> run around the roof or something? <laughs> no, you've been serious. Yeah, yeah. So I can get a new pair of so Louboutins as well? Yeah, you wow. can do what you like. That is so amazing. this is yours, and plus, we'll give you £2,000 on top. It was really, really nice for me to be able to offer Benjamin the extra £2,000 on top, which he didn't expect at all. It was purely because the 50 centimetre is a very rare bag to find, but it's not as desirable as a 30 centimetre. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. This is amazing. Oh, I'm so glad. This is so happy. Oh, I'm so happy. Mm, thank you. Thank you're you welcome. so much. Well, I'm glad that you're pleased. I'm so happy. Can you carry it? <laughs> Give me it here. Thanks. I've just made a lovely individual, a very happy man. And I'm over the moon about it. And it's just so nice. Not only has he changed the bag, his bag for our bag, but he's got money in his pocket as well. I mean, how, how good can it get? Thank you so much for everything. <laughs> You're welcome, darling. Take care. Oh, I'm just totally, totally, totally happy. I just feel like my life is complete. It's the best scenario that could have possibly come out of this. <laughs> Next time on Posh Porn. James, this is amazing. I've measured it up, it comes in at around six carats. You've been poodling around in this, getting your newspaper and your milk, haven't you? <laughs> I love this one. That is really cute. Do you know I've been the, the best assistant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look out along the horizon and see him and his shipmate coming towards me in a two-man canoe, saying, what do you think of this?